start with okay so share screen share this one from the beginning okay so as you know you've registered for this particular webinar which is about mastering the latest marketing technology so with this this particular one so i do i will have a series of webinars that are going to come out on different topics all related to the marketing scene and they, they're all going to be relevant in different ways so this particular one is more about different uh, programs that have just either been released or they've been they're, they're fairly new in, in the game of you know that they've been out for probably the last two two years or so and, and I've found really effective in what I do with with my marketing and, and using Marylytics and uh, helping other clients with what they were doing with their marketing activities. So what we're going to go through today is the latest program. So what, what I consider these programs weren't around a few years ago. They're good for your practical strategies. They're good for uh, engaging with customers a lot more or interacting with customers that you can get rather than doing that scattergun approach for um, marketing. It's getting more in, you know, direction, you know, directional towards what customers are wanting to engage with. Uh, we do have some apps on streamlining your workflow and then optimizing and then otherwise uh, grow, how to get other apps to what, what's out in the marketplace now and seeing what is available or where to look to find what's out there with the solutions to the problems that you may have. So just a little bit about me. Um, I have I met Kimberly. I haven't met you before, but uh, everyone else, I have met you somewhere along my trails of being in business so I've been in business for over 20 years uh, and have had like a wide range of experience activities I've had several restaurants and um, I've got an e-commerce site I've been doing a lot of work in training and I've now currently got my software which is Marylytics so I am someone that does know about how business works and especially like Cafe Mets I would have to be my longest time restaurant I had that for about five and a half years 25 staff, you know, over a million dollars in business per year. You know, we had two and a half, three, four thousand customers per week. So we we had a really big business, you know, what I consider a medium-sized business where you're going to have every problem that can possibly happen, whether it's customer complaints or staff stealing or, you know, everything that can possibly happen has happened in that time. And that was a good foundation for me to get into my qualifications, which then launches into the next one. So from that particular restaurant and one of my friends encouraged me to go down the qualification road. So I did get accredited. So I had done some business coaching while I was doing that particular business, but I was encouraged to go down the qualification road. So I have since got 19 qualifications. So working as a trainer, just going to welcome Michael in. So I, you know, taught all sorts of things like leadership and management, project management. And, you know, the thing about being a trainer as well is that you need to have practical experience in which to teach the theoretical side because otherwise, you know, there's no point learning from somebody that has never actually done the, the work or what it's like. So I'm very big on storytelling and I find having stories to that relate to, you know, different particular uh qualifications or you know a circumstance if you've got customer complaints well I've got a hundred stories on that one alone and um, you know it makes a big difference project management was the one I've been teaching the longest I think leadership management and project management I've been teaching for over five years and especially doing the software I, it was hand in hand with when I developed the software of doing pro teaching project management uh, some other uh the programs that I've done is Landmark. I'm a big believer in doing personal development alongside accreditation. So I've done most of Landmark's programs over 10 years and I found it's been a big difference to being able to scale. Uh, you know, to me, you can't expand if you don't expand, you know, being able to deal with certain deal things. With certain things. Oh, we've got some background noise there. Uh, do you want anyone just want to turn off, just put yourself on mute so we just don't get any background Beautiful. Thank you, everybody. Whoops. All right. And then the other program I did uh, about two years ago was 
key person of Influence Accelerator by Dent. And this has to be by far one of the best accelerator programs I've ever done. I've done multiple different coaching programs. And uh, this one just sets you in a different league. Uh, it's all about uh, profile, partnerships, publications, uh, products and pitching. So you really get clear on what you're doing and what the what's required for business. So if you ever hit, it tends to be both of these landmark and KPI. It's like if you've done those kind of programs, you become sort of like this bit of an inner club of there's a lot of integrity about what you do. And it just I feel like it's made a big difference to the way I run business. Next one. Okay, so a re the reason why a lot of this this webinars have come out and like Les meeting me last year in the trade shows was that I developed some software. So when I had that business called Cafe Met, so I, that was about 12, 13 years ago, 14, 14 years ago, I found one of the biggest problems I had in the business was being able to track and measure my marketing activities. And it's a problem that I, when I talk to other business owners, talk to advertisers like shopper dockets or newspapers everyone seemed to have the same kind of problem that there was no way to track and measure any type of marketing activity so I mean you can google analytics will track what's going on online so where people visiting your site where they come from the demographics the same with facebook they measure you know clicks and likes and click-through rates and reach and audience and things like that but I found as a business owner I wanted to know where my money was being spent how much I was spending and what was the return, you know, how many customers. So from the trade shows, like when I did them last year, I did seven. So like how many customers did I get from each trade show? Each trade show cost me a certain amount of money, but how many customers came in and what was the value of those customers, average sale, the cost per customer. And that's something that has come out with Marolytics that I then six years ago started creating this software program. So I've designed and developed it. And I'm only one of 4% of women globally that have actually gone in the tech sector. So you can see from this, we'll go into the QR codes later, but, you know, it's it's quite a big thing to go my, my, to go in and develop software. I didn't have a software background. I have no IT background, have no idea about it. I've learned along the way, lots of mistakes along the way. And, um, you know, just it, it's been quite a journey of getting to know, well, what do I do and how does it go and where am I up to? And, you know, I've fortunately got some great teams behind me. I've got a team of developers in Vietnam that I've sourced that do all my coding. And, you know, I've got my VA team in the Philippines. So I do manage a global team. And we've we've come a lot of a journey of integrations with Square and Zero and Lightspeed. So there's been a lot of trial and error and learning about different things along the way so you know this is my baby and it's something that I'm very proud to bring to life you know it's been six years in development I think just April last year we launched the public at the trade shows and now available to actually measure track and measure any type of marketing activity and then last year in the year well, the last two years has been a big time for getting acknowledgement of this kind of achievement so got uh, become a finalist or a winner in multiple different kinds of awards so this is in categories such as business marketing technology and innovation so there's a lot of recognition um these are you know uh, asia pacific stevie uh i was a bronze winner the international women's stevie awards i got two awards with that and you know australian business champion the women's one and small business finalist in those ones and then Part of the KPI is, uh, Business Accelerator, they have a, a side project which is called a book challenge. And something they believe in being as part of your profile is that you are an expert in whatever you do. And from that, I wrote a book called Boost Your Marketing ROI. Now, as you saw, I've got quite a good background in training accredited qualifications. And the thing is, when you go and do a diploma or a university degree, you're going to choose particular subjects you're going to choose things that will either resonate with you or you know so it's just one or two things yep revel sorry i got yeah michael i just missed that a few minutes ago we uh, integrate with revel or we will be integrating with them as well um so yeah i wrote this book and what it is it's part of the journey of 
what my, how marketing works. And you will get uh, access to a free copy of this at the end of, um, in the thank you email at the end of the webinar. So with this book, you know, it's it goes from start to finish, how your planning goes and your budgeting and right through to uh, looking at different ways to promote your business to implementing different activities and what your goals and visions are identifying the results which is where Marilytics comes into and then innovation which is forecasting and you know ab testing and and all that kind of thing so there is uh, lots of little sections it's all based on sections of topics and then stories that match into it and this book did get um, was an amazon bestseller when it was released and got finalists for the international book awards and was a finalist in the australian business book awards last year and there's only three three people three books that get chosen for that category so it was very uh you know it was absolutely awesome to get that finalist uh result okay now we're going into these are some of the people that we've been working with over the last few years so just to let you know that we do lots of different, you know, it's not just about the software, it's marketing activities as well. So I've worked with, you know, Mountain Wine Tours as one of our current street science. They're um, some of our current clients and uh, worked with different cafes just to either it could be some sort of service with marketing like email automations or it could be branding and making sure there's consistent branding across all social media or all their platforms. And just, you know, it's something about how trust is built with, you know, is your brand consistent online? And surprisingly enough, you know, a, a lot of businesses don't put much, con you know, much thought into this process about what is it like for a customer when they first experience your business? What are the different touch points that they see, you know, whether it's a YouTube video or whether it's a Facebook post or whether it's an article that's written on Medium, you know, is it branded correctly and got the right information and by, you know, biographies that really showcase what your business is and, and what kind of services you provide. And is this really clear to the customer? So these are some of the companies that we've worked with to either work with them on their branding or marketing journey or coach them or even just provide some services. All right, so now I want to get to know a little bit about you guys. So I've got here this uh, little questionnaire. It only takes, it's only about six or seven questions. I've just popped the link. Sorry, I will pop the link to everyone. All right, so I've popped the link in the chat. If you can just go and quickly fill that out. As I said, there's only, a, uh, they're all yes, no questions. So just go yes, no, yes, no, whichever one applies to you. And just let me know when you have completed it. And just give me a thumbs up when you're ready to move forward. So I'd overthink the questions. Okay, Michael, you ready? Awesome. Anyone else finished? Yep, Les finished. Kelby, done yet? Kimberly, how are you going? Was that a yes, have, Kelby? You didn't have enough maybes. <laughs> no, I didn't want a maybe. It's a yes, no. I know, but the summer's like, oh, maybe, kind of, not really. No, no. Just if, it, if it's a maybe, pick the one that is most likely. Okay, Kimberly, you're good. Awesome. Deb, you're good. Beautiful. All right. So that just helps me find out a little bit about you guys and where I can see that you may need some help. All right. So now we're actually getting into the different kind of apps and programs that are available. So practical strategies. 
One of my first favourite ones is otter. Now, has anybody here heard about otter? Just say yes or no. No? Maybe. Okay, so otter is one of those wonderful programs for, that translates things from speech to text. Otter, yep. So Michael has heard of it. So I absolutely love otter for transcribing. You can... Like, you know, if you use Google search, I use Google search, uh, voice search quite a bit, and it does not copy it down directly. Like so many words get mixed up or, you know, just got, where the hell did that come from? So some of my text messages may be a bit weird and it's because I've used that voice to text. But, you know, with, with Otter, Otter, I would have to say, would be pretty close to being very big. So Les, you're a big user on Google search. Yep. So similar thing. So one thing that I love using Otter for is that it can um, transcribe meetings, you know. So if you have a meeting or if I've recorded a webinar and I want to have bits and pieces, you know, I think especially for my demonstration videos, I wanted to have the record, you know, the actual scripting for that or I, you know, was creating the scripts. So I was just going and, you know, read out everything I wanted and then I wanted to actually get a really nice clear script for the video so I would then transcribe it and then clean up the text so that it became an easier script to write to use to then record my demo video so that they're much cleaner and are not filled up with lots of stuff that shouldn't be in there so Otter, great for especially when you're having team meetings that you can transcribe it, that you don't need to keep meeting notes or have someone actually write the meeting notes for you. You can just have Otter going off in the in the in the background and it will actually, you know, take notes of pretty much everything. And you can see in here, this is just from their landing page, their web page, how accurate it is that you can see the different people involved. You can also bring in slides. For it, which is something that that's a new feature to this particular program. All right, next one is Lumen Five. Now, anyone here heard of Lumen Five before? No, Kelvin, no, Kimberly, were you? Yes or no? Yes, you yes. have. Awesome. Okay, and Michael can't see you, but I'm just assuming it's a no. <laughs> uh, no from me. No from me. No, from you as well. So Lumen 5 is where we can transcribe, well, not transcribe, but let's say you've got a blog article and the blog article you want to put into a video. And this is a really cool, so it's a bit like having a PowerPoint presentation or a, a slideshow presentation that you can use your text to, you know, have images or little snippets of video. And then it becomes like a like a slideshow that's a video and but there is no audio in it it's purely about capturing the attention it is a video slideshow and you know it's a really cool way to bring those blogs that or, or written articles to life in a way that you know can really interact with people a lot more so that's a really cool little uh little app to use i have used it twice for some videos I, I don't have an example with me now i was trying to find where it was but we posted it about six months ago so i have to go back through six months worth of posts but we just found it caused a lot more engagement than just a stagnant you know blog article that was just text only now the next one is this one i found is quite exciting it's synthesia so this is a really it's, it's again another video type of a software program but one of my friends he used it last year and got it got me to critique it and i didn't know that it was an ai video i just was asked to critique this video sales letter so it was an introduction to this blog i think it was an article or it was it was called a video sales letter and I thought I was looking at a real person. So that's how much that, you know, this quite stumped me of what it was, what type of program was. But when you look at it a bit deeper, it's based on AI. So you get to choose the kind of person you have. So it becomes a lot more interactive that, you know, you can have the video. So similar to the Lumen 5, which was just text and images, this one is a person engaging. So there is multiple different kinds of people you can use. And, you know, that way you can actually speak directly to 
your your visitor um, or if you want to have that there's an article and it becomes you know a bit of a story then you can use this particular platform to showcase that story as someone speaking it becomes a lot more visual and a lot more audio that you're getting that more engagement so it's something I found that is quite exciting that you know just if you want to have that you've got your website and you want to introduce people say hey welcome to my website you know it was lovely to meet you we're here if you know contact our support or go into our chat if you have any further questions but we just wanted to give you a warm welcome to who we are and this is what we do so you know it's something like that's a 30 second or a 60 second video that you could put as an intro to your website just to create more engagement so that one I find really really exciting as a um, an AI tool that's out there. All right, so now we go on to customer experiences and there's some platforms around that actually make, you know, not only did we have the video ones we've just showed with Lumen5 and Synthesia, but these ones are how to get more, you know, more traffic or more engagement with your actual your business and um, content that's out there. So the first, I've got, these two on the same page because they're virtually the same type of programs and the biggest the one that's being spoken about the most in in the industry at the moment or you're probably seeing I mean I've seen it on the Today Show and on news that is this chat GBT now has anybody here used chat GBT yep yes it's a good starting point yep Les you're a no no, Kimberly, you're a no. yes. No. No, Deb, you're a no. Michael. No, I haven't used it. No. You haven't used it. Okay. So I would highly encourage using it because everything I wrote in regards to this webinar, whether it was the social media post, whether it was the email that went out to you guys as my um campaign email whether it was uh, like I did a landing page, I did a description, a meta description, all the emails that go in the automation, everything was written on ChatGPT, like everything. I did not write any, like I would put create a headline. So, you know, if I just show you on this next one, this is uh, an example of what I did. So you can see all the chats that I've been doing down the side, but I've got, you know, the headline I had originally for this particular webinar was an introduction to using technology in your marketing, which is not overly exciting. I just thought, you know, that that's a rough, you know, it's a very boring. I can boring. see Kelby, Kelby, you know, boring. nodding there. So boring. very boring. So boring. I got it to create this, you know, generate, enhance the headline. So empower your marketing strategy with cutting edge technology. Didn't really like that one. So I said, create a webinar title in marketing. So I had a bit of a play around and that's where we got mastering the latest marketing technology. And then I got it to write social media description and, you know, it literally came from there. So you just pretty much tell it what you want to do. I got it to write me a business plan or a promotional plan for the webinar. I've got it to write lots. You can see down the side here, there's been lots of different things, skilled visas. I work with one of my clients that uh, we were trying different things. I think we were looking at blog articles to write. So I've got it to write blog articles. So we would create a headline and then do an introduction and then write a thousand word article. And it does that really, really easy. So chat GBT is definitely, definitely worthwhile using. It does make life easier. I think you'll be surprised in the next six to 12 months how much it will change everything about how things are written because it just... Yeah, I am not the greatest of writing. You know, I, I have good grammar, but I have very boring writing. I'm straight to the point because I don't like my imagination goes with constructing things rather than writing things. So I don't have that creativity flair with my writing. So I've always used AI tools uh, for the last probably two years. I've used ones like Copysmith AI, Copywriter AI, Word Hero. So I've been using these platforms for quite a while, but the chat GBT is something that I, you know, it's a completely different experience. Canva, so I'm not sure how many people here use no Canva or use Canva. I'm assuming, I've got to assume most people do know what it is. It's a platform to 
create images. So it's a graphic design platform that you can have, you know, you create it, you, you grab an image and you can have it to Facebook size or Instagram size. You can create a re resume, you can create a poster or a business card. You can create all sorts of images inside Canva. And they've picked up on this AI tool as well that they've they've implemented this tool called Magic Write. And that's where it helps write copy and blog outlines, captions, content ideas, bios and more. So I did have a bit of a play with it. You do need to have the paid subscription and one of the high level paid subscriptions. So, it, you know, if you're on a free platform, you can't use it. So it's mainly for those that are on paid platforms. And then there's a chat GBT. Now, coming to get to driving more traffic or, you know, looking at what content you are writing is I do, one of my next webinars coming up is going to be on content and about how content is really important. So the way we look at running marketing is there's brand awareness and there's lead generation. Now, brand awareness is we tend to use Facebook and a lot of our social media platforms to get our brand out there and attract more people to the business. And lead generation is actually driving them with a call to action about, well, we want you to come into the business and buy something. So whether whatever the call to action is, is how we're attracting those people to come through. So with the brand awareness, that's where we tend to do blog, art, blog articles or posts to really let customers know, well, who we are, what we do, what service we provide, what problems we solve. And, you know, the answer the public is one of these great little platforms that actually show what the Google search is looking for. So it's, um, I think it's now purchased by Neil Patel. So with his Kiss, Kiss Metrics, so he's now got his big face all over the front cover of, of the web page. But you can put in a topic like marketing and it will search that, it will generate all the different search phrases that people are typing into Google, all right? So, you know, when somebody's typing in, I want to know more about marketing or what does marketing do or what is a marketing mix or what is a marketing strategy or if we come here, can marketing save the planet? Can marketing make you rich? You know, these, these are topics that people are actually typing into the Google search. And you can see here we've got about 80 questions that are here and the search volume just on this particular topic in Australia is 8100 8, and the cost per click is $4.50. So we can see a little bit about how much it's going to cost with a Google ad and um, what people are actually searching for. Now, why I particularly like to showcase this program is because when we're writing a blog article, I know especially using VAs, in the Philippines is they will go and go, yep, four problems too, or how do I solve things? And, you know, these are great little articles, but they're not, they don't really work for SEO. This, if we use one of these headlines, so we put, um, let's say, um, if we write a, an article on why marketing is a career, let's say you're a careers advisor, one of the one of the articles you would write is why would you do marketing as a career, and then that's what people are searching for. So when if you have your article titled that, and you're a you know you're a recruitment agency that does that, then that's going to come up in the search. Your article, which is featured on your website, is going to come up in the search. So just speaking on that, when you do do blog articles or writing articles, which is showcasing what problems you're solving or what your authority is or what products and services you provide, you want to put them on your website first. This is how SEO works is we want you, you know, Google really wants to find you. You want to send people to your website, not your Facebook page, not your LinkedIn page, because Facebook can easily shut your business down or LinkedIn. You know, you don't have control over that site, whereas you have a lot more control over your website and you really want to be sending your traffic to your website. So the way to do article writing is to feature it on your website and then share it to your social media platforms. So starting with using this particular platform, get your headline, then you can enhance it using the chat GBT, making it just sound a little bit better. But as long as it's got those key words there or key phrase, that's how you want to do that. And then you write it, that will come up in the search. The, you know, the person that's prospect that's searching, they will click that, they will type the phrase in, your article will come up, they go straight to your website on that page. And you can have like some solutions down the bottom or a call to action.
So that's a really cool thing about using this particular site. It's called Answer the Public. And um, it's a good way to direct people, you know, just to have that awareness or, you know, if people are searching for problems or searching for particular topics, yours are going to come up as a article rather than having a title that nobody ever searches for. Now, the next thing is Grammarly. I'll put this one back in here as well because I think it's really important to look at making sure if you're not using ChatGBT and you're writing articles yourself or you're using somebody to write them for you is to use Grammarly. Now, Grammarly is really good for our punctuation and our grammar, so it does detect all that. It does detect plagiarism as well. I think this is really important, especially if you're paying to get some articles written. I had uh, I engaged the media uh agency last year to write some articles for me and part of the agreement was two articles per week uh, sorry per month uh, for me to use and then two articles to go to media publications and I found with the articles that when I put them you know after about nine months it was like it, the articles became really off topic it was really weird you know like what's the things to look for in a graphic designer and, and that had nothing to do with marketing ROI. So I started to question or they told me it published and I went and searched and I found it published under another business, which was based in a real estate agency in America. So, you know, I've been paying a lot of money. I think it was about $700 per article. So, you know, it was a lot of money. It was, that was part of the agreement. I have no problem paying for something that is written for my business for what I, I'm actually after it and towards the, you know, the the plan that we have. But they then, I question them about it and they go, no, no, it's not plagiarized. There's no way. And it's like, well, here's proof. Here's the article that was written on another website uh, four years ago. And then because I it was denied um, that there was any plagiarism, I then went and checked all previous articles and found five more that had been done the same way. So felt completely ripped off as a client that I'd been paying a lot of money out to this, you know, agency to, you know, write me articles for my for, for my business that were, you know, one unique type of article and they weren't, you know, they, they were not that way. So when you're paying for things, I highly, highly recommend that you check, put them through a plagiarism checker, whether it's Grammarly or something else, really, really worthwhile to do that. Uh, I have with my VAs, you know, I've got my VAs and that, that write my articles we, you know, part of the process is that it has to be checked for plagiarism. I don't pay for any until they've been plagiarized checked. Uh, so as you can tell, I don't write many of my articles. I do make sure the headlines. So I will go and do all the headlines for the articles and create the plan. But the articles themselves, I, you know, that's something I outsource in my business. Okay, then we come to streamlining. So how we can make things work easier in the business and how we can simplify our workflow. Now, something I find is incredibly important is Linktree. So Linktree is really, really cool for having all your links in one page, especially like, you know, with uh, Instagram, we only have about 120 characters of, you know, you, you can't share a lot in that, you know, tell you about who your, what your business is on and what's all about. So Linktree is a really cool way to actually showcase more links. So this is an example of my Marilytic sales link. So I have three different link trees used for different purposes. And just, you know, you can put in here whatever links you want to have. So it's, a you know, this one particular, you called it Marilytic sales because I use it as a sales tool. So if I've got, say, one of my uh, postcards or promotional uh, document, you know, assets that, you know, could be postcard, could be a, flyer, then I would use this as a link to go, well, you know, if people want to find out more. So it can be, you know, I've got at the moment, we've got all these webinars that are starting to happen. I've got the scorecard, which you would have received in one of the emails that I think was in the registration email to if you'd like to do the scorecard, just tells you where you're at with the marketing and where you, you know, where you need to put your focus on. And then things like getting a free book or, you know, going to the website, having a free trial of the software, demonstration videos, templates, blogs, consulting, um, and then other things like workshops and podcasts or, you know, interviews that I've had as well. So I just found this was a really, really good tool to be able to showcase a lot of different things in one place. Now, I do have another link for customer service. 
because I find that, you know, we have these frequently asked questions or, and then the other one is just about the business itself. Now, the thing is you don't need to put in here your social media links because they are down the bottom, right? So you can link directly to your email, to Facebook, Insta, LinkedIn, and YouTube. So those are not links that you need to add in. They're already down the bottom and you can brand it. So I'm using the free link tree platform. So you can pay to have it more contextualized, but I've got all my brand colors in here as well. So I think that's really nice to keep along with your brand and your colors of your you know, the theme of your business. So you can see mine is the the blues, the dark blue and the light blue. And you can put in actually the hex codes of your brand so that matches your brand really well. Next one is QR code monkey. This has to be my favorite one of all the QR codes. Now, as we know in Australia, life changed when COVID hit and we all started to be understand more a lot about how QR codes work. Now, the thing I like about QR code monkey is that you can make it your own so you can put your you know something in the middle of it you know I've got my on my back of my business card I've got my own image uh, you can put your logo in the middle I've got different ones so that's how I identify all my different QR codes is I will put an icon or something in the middle so it's identified as what that particular QR code is used for uh, so I've pretty much taken that that extra step of going well you know, I know that it goes to the scorecard or I know it goes to a special offer that we released or I know it goes to, you know, that link tree. You know, it will be where it goes towards, whether it's a sales tool. And the other thing about QR code monkey is as well is you can put your brand colors in there. You can choose the style of the QR code as well so that it matches your brand colors. You can have different shapes, you know, if you want it as a heart or a circle, you can also shape it in that way. I've kept with the traditional square, but that's the nice thing about QR code monkey is you can make it the way you want to have it. And then we go into campaigns. So when I remember when I talked about, you know, we just gone through what we call the brand awareness um, information stuff. So that is about how to promote your brand and, and having thought leadership and expertise and being known for that. Then we start looking at, well, what are the what are the activities we're doing to create, hang on, I'm not quite ready for that, uh, to get to become more effective. So when you're starting to do some marketing, you will have some campaigns or projects in which to, you know, to move forward. So like a campaign can be inside a whole project. So project management was one of my uh, courses that became one of my babies that I taught for, you know, a long time, especially when developing software. And Trello has been my all-time favourite uh, project management platform to use. Now, there's probably, I don't know, 30, 40, 50 different types of project management platforms, loads of them. You've got Basecamp, Asana, Monday, you know, so there are a few. Uh, the thing I like about Trello is it's free. I've been using the free platform for quite a long time. You don't need to pay for it. It's easy to use. And it's great because you can manage a whole project, you can manage a team, you can manage an individual, you can manage certain tasks. So I've got some examples of different boards. So this particular board is based on one of my virtual assistants. So she, we have all our communication. So I keep one of the cards in here. So a board will be for a person or a project um, or an area. And then you have your lists and then your cards inside. So you can see with with Maylin, the communication, there's 129 messages. So we're keeping all the communication in regards to that. So this is things like I don't want communication about a project if she's telling me that she's out, you know, she's based in the Philippines. And let's say they've had a they like, you know, they've had a lot of wet weather lately and they've had no internet for the last two days. And she's suddenly got some on just for a few moments. So she'll let me know through that communication that you know, if it hasn't come through Facebook Messenger, then just, you know, all things have been held up because of certain reasons. So she'll put that through on the communication one. So we try to keep um, anything in regards to a project just inside the project. So you can see here this digital marketing audit with the projects in action. There are five messages. They are specifically related to that particular project. And you, this one here is attachments, like your little paper clip. So there's two attachments there. So, you know, just trying to keep it nice and clean that you know, if there's anything there, we might have Zoom meetings uh, and we'll keep the information in regards to Zoom meetings on that particular card. So it might be minute, uh, minutes of the meeting or notes. Things that need to be actioned will be on that particular Zoom meeting card, but general communication and then projects. 
So it's a nice way to be able to manage just a individual team member. I've got about, uh, I think, five or six with VAs. You know, I've got some that help me with my marketing, with my projects. I've got a financial VA. I've got uh, graphic design and SEO. So, you know, they all have their own card that we can manage their projects individually and doesn't interfere with other areas of the business. Then I have a board for social media. Now, this one is quite in-depth. You can only see just a small section of it, but this particular board has been going for about five years. I've gone through about four VAs during that time, but it's a way we keep everything going just in the one area, like we've got an AppSumo launch that we had late last year. I won't say certain testimonials to be engaged or media mentions. So we have different things. You can see... Uh, in this particular list, it was blogs and posts for 2022. We haven't created one for 2023 because it hasn't been our, uh, we've had other things that have been more important, like the projects of doing the webinars. But, you know, this is where we have, well, what's happening in that particular week? And we'll have, you know, 11, uh, there'll be 22 items. It could be our blogs. It could be our social media posts so that I can actually approve everything that would be going on that social media on, on that particular week. And then just as an example, this is probably more interesting for Michael, uh, is this is how I run my development team. So I, as I mentioned, I have a team in Vietnam that do all my development and, uh, you know, there's 12 of them. So it's not just one. I tend to speak to about three or four. This one here, Michael, is yours. This is the Rebel one. So that's what we've got currently in progress. So just, you know, this is how we communicate individual projects and that, you know, it's like, um, say so this one with Tyro, 49 you know, messages, it's something that's been going for two years. So we just can keep all our communication inside one card and any type of um, attachments or whatever's related to that. So, you know, this is my my show on how I work on Trello. So as I said, I've been using Trello now for over five years and it has evolved a lot in that time. Um, as a beginner, I started with a to do, doing and done. That's how my lists were so that whatever things I was working on, they would go on the to-do list and then they would move to doing and then they would move to done. But um, yeah, I seem to have changed the way I've operated my boards. Okay, next. So that's project management. That's the easiest way to run your run any projects or any um, you know, plans that you're doing. The next thing is this is how I manage social media. So I think most of you would know, or if, you, if you're if you aware that I run uh, the social media for Maralytics, we run on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube, and Google My Business and Pinterest. So we have six platforms that we run all our, you know, all our social media on. And Sendable is a great way. It's, it's um to, I'm not sure if Monday does it. I think they might do it as well, but this one I find is a really good little platform just to do all your social media and be able to do it all at once. So it connects with all those profiles that I mentioned. If you're using YouTube, it is only for video, not for static posts. So please be aware. So I don't have my YouTube connected, but you know we do use these other five platforms to schedule all our social media. So this is an example of February. I think February was a little bit of a quieter month because we would, we've got our focus somewhere else. But for me, it's about having consistency. So these blue ones are my, because it's an M, I think it's got Miriam. These are posts that we're sharing from Maralytics onto my own plat, onto my own profile on LinkedIn. So I like to be able to, because we've, you know, we've got, I think, three to 400 followers on Maralytics, but then on my own personal profile on LinkedIn, I have probably about 1,100. So I want to be able to showcase, you know, the things we are talking about on Maralytics as part of my expertise and part of my, you know, brand of, you know, this is one of the businesses I'm running and this is, you know, people are getting to know me for what, for being marketing and having that marketing expertise and the different types of topics that we're writing about. And then you've got these white ones that you can see here. There's Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and that will be, Google My Business and LinkedIn. So that's where we have sent a post out to five different platforms. So that will be a blog article that has been sent out at the same time. So that's a blog article that has been sent out at the same time to the one, you know, for, yeah, from yeah. the one post. Michael, can you just pop? 
Thank you. Uh, so we've got one article that's sent out at the same one time to five different platforms. And you can just, with that, you can tailor it towards each platform. So like Instagram has a certain size for the image and then Twitter only has a certain amount of characters. So you can go into the different tabs of the platform and contextualize it so it's suitable for that particular platform. And like Google My Business or Google Business Profile, may have a link that it's a certain area. So you can do that within this program of just contextualizing it to each platform. And the beautiful thing about Sendable as well is that you can schedule in advance. So normally what we do is we tend to have one month to probably one to two months scheduled in advance of particular topics. So that's how our social media planner has worked that we have six weeks in advance of topics that are scheduled. So that, you know, if something happens during that time, you know, if there's my VAs run out of electricity, you know, they've blocks access, then there's nothing that's going to affect the schedule. So, and look, we're sendable as well. It only costs about $30 a month. So it's it's a reasonable cost. It's not something that's going to break the bank. Uh, and this is really good, I find, for when you're a small to medium-sized business. Or if you're, you know, you're managing multiple accounts, you can then schedule across all different uh, platforms at the same time. Next, we're going on to Marilytics. So this is my baby. So uh, I think most of you would know me for this particular one, that Marilytics is the platform, as I mentioned in my introduction, that I have designed and developed to track and measure the ROI on all your marketing campaigns. So whether it's a trade show, which is where I've met Les and Michael, or you know, whether you do email marketing, whether you do some like Kimberly, you do some Facebook ads, you know, with the social media, whether it's community programs, which I know Kelby does a lot of, you know, you can track and measure all these kind of things, even influencers, you know, that's a really popular way of marketing at the moment. I've got a few clients that are really big on using this type of marketing strategy that they have influencers come into their store, showcase, you know, the influencers have got, you know, 10,000, 20,000, 100,000 followers, and they've got a, you know, a discount code or a special code, you can track and measure that, all these activities through Marilytics. So Marilytics, what we predominantly look for is we're looking at your marketing mix and we're looking at individual um, campaigns. So what are the sales, profit, the ROI percentage and the customers that come into that campaign? So this is an example of the dashboard. We can see, you know, what are the top performing campaigns? So the B buy one, get one free offer, or we may have a special offer. It is predominantly based on an offer. You know, what are your calls to action? So remember how I mentioned about the brand awareness and the lead gen? So we are looking at, you know, this is mainly tra tracking and measuring lead gen activities, not brand awareness activities. Now we've got sales trends. If you had this over six months, these lines, this is over two months. So the lines are straight because it goes from January to February. The March ones haven't kicked in yet because we are not at the end of March, but they will start to move down around so you can see what the trends are for each different kind of campaigns there are. And also down the bottom, we've got the actual statistics of what sales came in. So let's say Wish, you know, was 7,000. There was 1,100 customers. It was a profit of 1,800. It cost about six grand, you know, so it was a very expensive, it was a lead gen activity. So it was trying to get people on the database, which is very similar to why we do a trade show. You know, trade shows, we're going to meet thousands of people. We want to get as many, many people on the database so we can then remarket to later on. You got average sale per customer, profit per customer and cost per customer. So really good to have those kind of analytics. Next, um, this is on, again, still inside the dashboard. So there's, look, I'm only showing like two pages of the Marilytics. If you want an individual demo and how it would work for your business, please let me know after the webinar because we can, I'm more than happy to book one in as well. But, you know, the uh, different graphs actually show how your campaigns are active. You know, what's, you know, pie graphs work well, column graphs. This is one of my favourite down the bottom, which is top campaigns by sales or top campaigns by profit. So say when it's by sales, these are not profitable campaigns. These are your lead gen. This is where you're trying to get a database or you're trying to access as many people as possible. And, you know, trade shows are typically something like that. Uber Eats, if you're in hospitality, would be like your Uber Eats and your DoorDash is, you know, with them, you're not going to be making a lot of money, but you want to get the database, right? So when you get the database, then you can email to them or re-advertise to them at because they're in your database. 
So you're going to actually, you know, an email newsletter is highly profitable because it doesn't cost much to send out. But that's where you want to engage in getting your customers to spend more money. It's easier to remarket, and that's where your profit comes in, to have remarketing style campaigns and look at your sales is your, you know, how you're collecting that database to get, you know, get those first customers to engage with your brand and with your business. So you can see here the two biggest ones by sales are Wish and Google Ads. And then the highest ones here for profit, are emails, newsletter and Wish. So just to give you an example of, you know, this is how it would work really well. Okay, next thing is growth. So um, growth I've mainly targeted in, you know, where do you look for apps that are the solution to a problem that you have? So, you know, business is not unique. We've been operating businesses for hundreds of years or, you know, uh, you know, we've been trading, you know, products for, you know, whether it's been bartering or, or whatever way of doing business has been been always a buy and sell. So with, you know, with now with the way we have technology coming around, is that there is more and more solutions to specific problems. And then how do we, you know, you don't need to go and develop a software program like I have with Marolytics, right? So that is something that's very unique to, to go and do that. And it tell, I tell you what, it takes a lot of years <laughs> to go and develop software. It takes a lot of money. It takes a lot of um, just keeping, you know, keeping aligned to it and keeping on purpose and keeping motivated, you know, um, not everybody has that in them that, you know, you have it may have a problem that you've got. And then I um, have no doubt that most problems are solved in some way, especially with the way technology is moving so fast. We look at the way AI tools came out about two years ago, and it was literally two years ago with Word Hero and CopySmith AI. Within two years, we have ChatGBT. So technology is moving at a, you know, a lightning, lightning paced, lightning speed pace. So very, very fast. But if you want to have, like I, I found with, you know, in my research with doing, developing Marolytics, I still haven't found, and I'm always out there trying to look for other platforms that do the same thing as Marolytics because I would love to have a competitor because me personally, I'm a very competitive person. I think uh, I strive a lot harder if I'm competing against somebody. Uh, just, you know, that's the sales nature that comes out of me. And I just find that I strive more, but it also generates more ideas that you can bounce off. You know, if someone's doing something, then that gives me, opens me up to new doors of new ways of doing things. So having a competitor is actually really good for business. And I would love to have a, you know, a competitor, direct competitor Marolytics. I found the only thing that comes close is your big, you know, oracles and saps that, that, you know, those big programs that work for big corporates, they can do this kind of thing. But Marolytics is not targeted towards those kind of businesses. We're based towards small to medium size operators that want to be able to do them themselves. So if you want to find the place of where these programs are, it's called AppSumo. So I don't know how many of you know AppSumo. It's probably one of the largest marketplaces so it's like a groupon groupon is a marketplace for products and services whereas appsumo is a marketplace for apps and saas programs or new solutions there are lots of different other ones like life timo and saas pirate and uh product hunt and fs6 uh, i could probably name about 15 to you because i've listed on all of them but AppSumo has to be the biggest and most well-known. So as Marileaks is a, a new software product, we are launched on there as well to attract, you know, clients from, you know, the thing with AppSumo though, I please want want you to really, rec you know, get acknowledge about it is these are new programs or new platforms. So it is the people that buy from here are a lot more gentle and a lot more easier to uh, new software, you know, there is going to be bugs, there is going to be clunks and things that don't work. And the developers and then the sales teams that work with these programs really want to have feedback and input on how these programs work. And, you know, is there things that can be fixed? So something really important, but there are thousands of programs that are available. I mean, this was the landing page I took a screenshot of a couple of days ago. They've all got lifetime deals. So you're looking at, you know, 29 bucks to 49 bucks type of thing. So it's a way to get early adopters. It's a way to, I can share a list of marketing apps that integrate with Level. Beautiful. Michael, I'm interested in that. 
so yeah, this is a really good way that, you know, if you want to, if you have a problem that you, uh, you know, that you can let, uh, you can find out some solutions. They'll see if there is something out there already. Okay, so in review, that pretty much covers everything that we went through. Now, I'd love you all to take yourselves off mute and let me know what you thought or what was your favourite or if you have any particular questions. We might start with you, Kimberly. <laughs> right. Um, everything is um very helpful, but what um caught my attention is that I never knew that Trello is that very useful. Yep. I've never thought that um, I can maximize its feature. So I'll try it out after this um, session. Yeah, yeah it, that, that's why I've done like the particular screenshots to show you different ways in which to use it. Because unless you've seen somebody's Trello board, it you know, it's an empty canvas. And that's like, mm -hmm. even Marilytics is the same, right? It's an empty canvas until you start putting data in there or information in there or anything in there it's then you don't, you know, then it starts to work. But if you don't know what to put in, I, I've had in the past, you know, back when I was starting, I used to ask people that had really good boards, can you share it with me so I can start to have an example of it? So mm -hmm. that's why I particularly shared those ones to show that you can use them in different ways. Mm -hmm. And I've even got a board set up for my goals and timeline of what is the five-year future for Marilytics? You know, what is our goals for 2022? What is our goals for 2023? What are our goals? And then the projects that go inside that. So it's a really good way for scoping out the future too. Mm -hmm. Right. Cool. All right, Kelby, did you get oh, any hey. new toys? I did get a couple of new toys. You reminded me of some that are on my list of 42 useful AI things to tell my clients about, which is good. Um, just the point about Trello. Trello is my go-to task management for my little micro clients, the free yep. version. And, it's, and I use it myself here at Adaptic because it just, the user interface works for me. My brain looks at it and goes, yeah, the buttons are where they're supposed to be. Yeah. Uh, whereas I've got I mean, I've got clients who use ClickUpThesMonday.com. I've also got the full-blown or Wurzburger or Asana here. Yeah. Um, but th they all work. It, it's just that I find Trello for micros is beautiful. It's just a yeah. clean, clean solution. Yeah. If you already your team's not too big. You've got, if you're running a big team, sort of 40, 50 people, maybe not. But, yeah, for... for our side's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. I've got the similar thing. I've I've seen ClickUp and I've seen Monday, and I get really lost inside them. And you know, these are just small business. You know, I've been a get like a guest. So I've been invited, and I just get confused. Whereas, as you say, Trello, nice and easy. The thing I like about Trello as well is that you can use it on your phone. Like it's easy on a on a phone. It's on a tablet, and it's on a laptop. It is the same interface. And yeah. that's something that's really important too, because, you know, I get messages, my team are based, you know, in Vietnam and in the Philippines or in Bangladesh or India. So they're different time zones. And even when I was on holidays, I can actually maximize my communication while I'm away and just communicate through the Trello board and we can still keep on top of work while we're there. So, yeah, good to see that. So was there a new toy? Um, yes, yeah, Synthesia and Lumen 5, I've got to go back to those. Yeah. Um, Linktree is cute. I don't... I don't use it so much, but I had forgotten about the, about Linktree. Yeah. Because, just because it's not something that I touch on every day. Yeah. But yeah, it was, it, it was very informative. Cool. Okay, Les. Yeah, it's actually a great shopping cart of um, uh, software, I must say. Um, yep. and, uh, what I loved was, especially the initial one, Otter and uh, Lumen, very much yep. um, in tune. Um, I've been a Smartsheet user for projects for the last 10 years or yep. eight years, uh, which I love probably because it sort of extends from Microsoft, but I love mm. the look of Trello. Um, we currently in the company sure. that I work for, we use ClickUp and I do find it a bit um, a bit loose as far as uh, where things are. You have to hunt through it. It's a lot of searching, but I do like that. Um, oh. Linktree, I think I may have shown you when we were at the trade shows, we have a com comparative product, which is mainly in the hospital industry, which is very similar to Linktree, but a yep. lot more, uh, a nicer look and feel, but very similar. But uh, yep. that was very good, very good. Awesome. All right, Deb. Hey. Um, look, there's a couple of couple of ones there that I really want to go in and have a play with, and I think that's probably where I'll learn my most information is jumping back on and those um, interested in really having a, a good good look at how I can use that chat GVT and that sort of thing as well be interesting. 
Yeah. And that could yep. be applied. Um, cool. Yeah. Cool. So that one was your favourite, was it? Well, there's a few there, but um, that one I will want to have a bit of a play with, yeah. Awesome. Cool. All right, Michael? Yeah, I have a Trello user here. I use it all, on all my uh, project management for, for my role. Yep. Do you Is yours looking similar to mine, do you think? Um, relatively, yeah. Yep. Cool. And was there any others that were new for you or that, you know, you thought were cool as well? Uh, yeah, some of the others were pretty cool, but not sort of specifically to my role. So it's yep. not something I'd sort of focus on. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. All right. So just so you know what happens from here, I'm not sure if any of you are interested, but it's just there if, if you're about, if you're, if you want to go a bit further and you want to work on, you know, working on those tools. Um, I think for most of getting, to, I know, I know most of you as you're pretty high level with a lot of this stuff that uh, I'm doing a workshop on these particular tools. So especially with using the answer, the public and the chat GBT about creating some doing some productivity, whether it was writing some articles or actually just getting to use these programs and having a, a helping hand about it. So we've got a workshop on the 18th of March to, you know, move along and, and actually get using it and having, you know, that hand holding in there just will help uh, you know, do, just learn a bit more about some of those programs. And I find some, you know, if, if we haven't used them, you know, you've heard about them and you know, you learned about it, but actually implementing it is where the biggest problem lies is it's easy to forget that they, you know, it's been a while ago. So uh, that's where we're having the workshop. And then also after that, the next topic of webinars that's going to come out is about content. So we're going to be specifically targeting about how, to, you know, when I was talking about the answer, the public is we're going to be showcasing a lot more about content management. So that's what the next series of webinars are going to be about. So then there'll be a mastermind on the 15th of April, which will be about six hours where we'll be working on creating about 10 articles for the business. Because a lot of the time we don't have time to write these kind of articles. Or, you know, we're so busy doing so many different things that uh, we don't get time to do this kind of stuff. So I think it's really important to just have a day out. It is a Saturday. I'm really sorry, but I think that's the best way to just go, let's do, you know, spend some time out and write 10 articles and we can use chat GBT, use answer the public, have all these written out for, for you and then schedule them out and you don't need to think about them. It's all going to be done for you. So, or done with you during that mastermind. So that's it for today. We are now finished. I'd like to thank everybody for coming today. I really appreciate uh, your participation and turning up. You know, that's a big thing to even turn up that, uh, you know, very easy to RSVP to events and get busy and distracted and not turn up. So I really am very grateful that you turned all oh, everyone turned up today. I really appreciate that. And if you want to connect with me, if those that haven't connected with me, I think Kimberly, I don't have you. Just uh, you can use that code or or scan. Um, I don't know if the scan. Hopefully, the scanner works for that. But uh, yeah, does anybody have any final questions before we're finished? Just a quick one from me, if I can, Miriam. Uh, are you, sure. Would you send out a copy of this video to us so we can review um, it? Or... I wasn't planning on it, but if you want it, I can. Yeah, because I think there's a few other people that I could actually show this to and I would actually love yeah. to connect, to be honest. Well, I do have two more webinars next week. Yep. So, oh, you know, same one? Same one? Yeah, yep. same one. So I'm running, what I'm doing is I've got that rather than just running one webinar once is I'm running the same webinar four times. So there's four different time slots. Perfect. So get your team. It's the same. Um, it'll be on the Eventbrite. I can send you the Eventbrite link again if you want. No, I've got that. Thank you. I've got got that. That. So if Thanks. you have a look on there, you'll be able to see the, the ones coming up, the new dates. But it is Tuesday afternoon and Thursday, 1 o'clock. So they both run at the same, you know, same time for two weeks. That way, yep. if you've missed out the first week, like now, you can get your team to come into the second one. That's fantastic. Thank you. Sure, the girl. Uh, anyone else have anything else? Kimberly, did you have anything else? so far thank all you good. all right lovely to meet you thank you very much for coming thanks Kelby thanks Michael thanks Les thanks Deb I think I've got everyone there awesome and Michael I really want to talk to you later about the integration apps sounds yep, good not a problem just reach Fantastic. out all yeah. right I'll thanks give you guys thank you thank, all right, you, thank you everyone thank you. I appreciate you turning coming today and and I hope you enjoyed it all thank you all thank right you. see thank ya you. bye